Hello everybody and welcome back to more Let's Play Star Trek Online. This is The Doctor and here I am on the KDF faction again. And we are on the Moog Battlecruiser. So, here's the deal. I appreciate everybody's feedback in the um, last video introducing the Moog Battlecruiser. It was a lot of information, very good feedback. And uh, I appreciate all the comments and everybody giving suggestions. Uh, I've decided to stick with a cannon build on this ship. That just seems to be working out well. I've played it in several PVEs and I've gotten a good grasp on it. I like it and it's working well. It turns well enough that I can play it as an escort, even though it's kind of a beefy escort. I can play it as an escort and uh, keep my you know weapons pointed forward and um, and do all right I have a lot of healing abilities as well but um, um, pretty much I've built it for offense and in fact in the description it even says it's an offensive type of ship and that's how I've built it so um, very cool very awesome uh, let me show you what I've done uh, I went ahead and was able to purchase a um, fourth Tetrion Dual Heavy Cannon Mark 11, very rare. Ends up that I had enough energy credits to buy one of these. So now I have completed the set. Now, normally I don't think I would go Tetrion anymore on this character or on this ship. But Tetrion is what I had. So Tetrion is what I'm going to stick with because that's just what I had. All I had to do is purchase one more Dual Heavy Cannon. Now in the future, I would like to change my energy type over eventually, uh, but that will take time. I've got a lot of grinding to do on this character. But anyway, now I've got four dual heavy cannons up front and then the one plasma torpedo. So we've got a lot of firepower, you know, going up here, going up front here. Um, then I have the three Tetrion turrets in the back. All right. Now, what I did is I did what I said I thought I was going to do in the last video. I moved the unique console up to the engineering console slot and then put a uh, fourth uh, tactical console here. And I got rid of the cannon damage ones and I ended up, I had enough energy credits to go ahead and buy four uh, Tetrion damage um, specific t energy type um, consoles. These will help boost my damage more than the uh, general cannon weapon damage. See, that's plus 18.8% cannon weapon damage, but these are plus 28 Tetrion damage, and then I got four of them. So just how awesome is that? Um, now, of course, I'd like to have uh, Mark 12 very rare ones, but I don't have that right now. Also, I still only have the Mark 12 rare, I mean Mark 11 rare, shield capacity I wish I could have a mark 12 very rare but I don't have the resources you know these are like 30 is like 30 million energy credits just for a mark 12 very rare field generator so it's gonna be a long time before I'm able to have one of those um, and then I got of course my um, universal simulated module my EPS my neutronium and I'm using the honor guard set and the obelisk warp core and it is working well. Now as for my stations, what I did is I decided to go ahead, some people have suggested put an engineering slot in the uh, Lieutenant Universal um, station, but I actually want some more tactical powers with my, um, uh, since I'm firing cannons here, and torpedoes. I like to have, if I'm firing cannons, I like to have at least two cannon abilities. And those two cannon abilities is cannon rapid fire and cannon scatter volley. So I'm able to do that by putting one of the positions here, one of the um, tacticals in the Lieutenant Universal slot. I'm able to get that cannon scatter volley. So now I can have cannon rapid fire to cannon scatter volley and still maintain a torpedo high yield to as well. So that I have good uh, weaponry on my torpedo and my um, uh, cannons. And then um, I got rid of one of the tactical teams and I got torpedo spread one as well on this character. So basically what I have now is I've got uh, rapid fire for my cannons and then I have um, a high yield for my torpedo and then I have a cannon scatter volley for my cannons and then a torpedo spread for my torpedoes. So I basically have like two spreads and two rapid fires or, high, or a high yield. So 
they go in hand really well. So I can, if I if I've got a ton of enemies on the screen, I can do scatter volley, and and um, the uh, torpedo spread. And so uh, my torpedoes will spread out, and my uh, cannons will spread out. Right now, if I'm just wanting to fire on one en enemy, I got one big enemy I want to take down. Well, then I can hit rapid fire, cannon rapid fire, and torpedo high yield. So I get that high yield torpedo, and then I get that cannon rapid fire, and that's like for doing one enemy. So now I'm able to take down, you know, a bunch of ships or one ship really well. And that's how I want to keep it. So that means that I'm using that Lieutenant Universal slot for the tactical character, but it works okay. It works really well. And then for the instant tactical, I have to have a tactical. There's no choice. And I put the tactical... Um, team on that. So I actually end up having two tactical teams, which is okay. Um, they, um, they share cooldown, but not, but it's like half on the second one. So while, the, while, while I just enabled that, this one doesn't take as long to cool down. So by the time my tactical team has run out, uh, I can enable it again, real, like there. So see, it works fast enough that I can use two tactical teams. Um, and then of course I have my commander engineering. Now I changed some of my powers here as well. Uh, I am able, because I'm an engineer on this character, to retrain myself and I had some good powers. I decided to retrain myself or retrain my liberated Borg to directed energy modulation three. Now because I'm firing Tetrion energy weapons, those their special ability is that they help drop shields faster. So I figured, well, let's put this directed energy modulation on, which is a shield penetrating energy damage per pulse, and add on to that Tetrion damage, also bringing down the shields on the enemy. So now I have the innate ability of the Tetrions um, bringing the shield down or trying to get through the shield, plus the directed energy modulation penetrating the shield. So you put those together and it's even more powerful, right? That's my thinking anyway, so it's it's basically a way that I can use the uh, Tetrions to the best of their ability and just kind of buff them up a little bit better. Also, uh, I was able to train Emergency Power to Shields 3. Uh, again, the ship is a little squishy, meaning Shield Hole is a little squishy. So by putting Emergency Power to Shield 3 on, I get this, you know, much better shield um, regeneration and power setting and all kinds of good stuff. So the highest tier of that so really good on uh, keeping me alive <laughs> keeping my shields up and then engineering team 2 to repair my hull and then emergency power to weapons 1 because I just always use that for everything <laughs> and then I did stick with science team 2 I like it I could change it to transfer shield strength um, if it fits in that position but for right now science team 2 is working out okay so I'm gonna keep it and then polarize hull 1 that's my build right now and then of course I have the, here's the unique console, the dynamic warhead disruptor mode, and then my, uh, my command modes that I have to enable. So that is what I've done for right now. And it's working well. So now that it's working well, I'm going to go into each STF and play them. The first one we're gonna do in this video is gonna be Infected Space Elite, or ICE as it's called. The next video we'll do CSE, Cure Space Elite, and the next one we'll do CASE, uh, Kittimer Core Space Elite. So uh, I'm going to pause the video as I queue up for an ice. And uh, so sit back and relax. When we come back, we'll jump into an ice and uh, see what this ship can do with the Borg. Okay, here we go, everybody. Ice. Load it up and uh, everybody's going to action. I'm going to cloak. I've been remembering to cloak a lot more now. I know all that was pretty chaotic and uh, it is uh, difficult to uh, comment while you're trying to play 
but I will try to comment on the powers I'm using. Everybody's way ahead of me up here. Some of these uh, go... Some of these go really extreme and some take a while. And this one's going to go really fast again. Awesome. 
for weapons. Fire that little thing guy. Whatever that thing does. I still haven't quite figured out this dynamic warhead stuff. High heal. Full power to weapons. Directed energy modulation. Engineering team. Have weapon system efficiency on. I didn't blow up. Almost did, though. Miracle Worker saved my life. Okay. So that was Ice in the Moog Battle Cruiser. And uh, I know that was kind of difficult for y'all to see what's going on and what I'm doing and everything. Well, thank you for healing me. Aren't you kind? One kind person in the game. So, at this point, I'm going to um, stop this video, and we'll make this video number one. And then uh, I'm going to go uh, queue up for Case somewhere, and uh, we'll, I mean, not Case, uh, CSE, and we'll go do uh, Cure Space Elites. And that one's a little more difficult because um, the uh, cubes really drain your shields in that one. So I'm going to have to do a lot of healing or just try to stay away from the cubes. Anyway, it'll be interesting and a lot of fun, and hopefully we'll get a better chance to see the powers in action and I need to add that torpedo um, button that I'm missing so I will do all that and then um, see you guys in the next video so thank you for watching and stay tuned for the next